Most of my fishing is done these days on the feeder. Now for feeder fishing, you need a reel. So what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is reel choice, what I use and why, including the sizes. I'm also gonna to talk to you about the lines, the braid I use and my thinking behind it. And last of all, how to load a reel. Get loads of questions, people asking me, how do you load your reel? How do you get it right every time? So I'm just gonna talk you through exactly how I do it. So let's kick off by talking about real choice, in particular sizes and what I use them for. So my go-to reel, for what I call general feeder fishing, say distances between sort of 15, 20 meters and 50, 60 meters, is the 4000 Aventus. Really nice size, comfortable in the hand, and I feel balance is really nice on the rod. That said, I do know a lot of people that use a little 3000 reel for feeder fishing. I think it comes down to personal preference. There is nothing wrong with using a 3000 size reel on a nine or a 10 foot rod. Balance is still okay. I just feel the 4000 for me feels better, gives me a little bit more winding power. But if you've got small hands, et cetera, and the 3000 is more comfortable, it will work in particular on short rods. The other thing I'll say is, 3000 reel, waggler fishing, that's my number one choice. Nice and light, and again, just feels right in terms of balance on sort of an 11, 12 foot rod if I'm pellet waggler fishing, or even doing a bit of natural water waggler fishing. I will add though, TDR distance, purely for distance work as the name suggests. Sometimes I'm fishing places like Boddington, and I'm fishing 13 and 14 foot sort of Aventus feeder rods, and I wanna be going 100 meters plus. That's where the sort of TDR mini big pit type distance reel really comes into its own. So 4,000 Aventus is my sort of number one choice for all round feeder fishing, so up to that 50, 60 metre mark. But the 3,000 Aventus and the TDR distance just help me to fill in those gaps and cover all my fishing needs. Next up is line and braid, as in what I use, the sizes I use and what I use it for. So let's start with mono. I only tend to use one mono and that's Pulse Pro. I use it in three different sizes in the main. Uh, 5.3, 6.1 and 8.8 .8, if you want to be really precise. The 5.3 I tend to use for all my long range work. So if I'm going to Boddington and I want to be chucking 100 metres plus, I'll use 5.3 Pulse Pro on the reel because it's low diameter. It's literally 0.18.2 diameter. And then I use a 12 pound shield leader. So that's my sort of long range setup. So it does play a part in my feeder fishing, but normally with a leader. The six pound, sort of my general short range feeder fishing, if I'm fishing for sort of skimmers or bream on a little cage and braid not allowed, I'll use the 6.1. And again, if I'm fishing somewhere like Barston, and it's Barston for me isn't a long range venue, so I'll use Pulse Pro in six pound on the reel, and then again, the 12 pound shield leader. I just like a leader when I'm fishing that type of venue. There's two reasons. One, it eliminates crack offs. Well, pretty much eliminates crack offs because you're always casting off the sort of 12 pound shield. The second one is when you're playing fish, I, hit, I always know where they are. Cause as soon as I hear that knot hit the first ring on the quiver rod, I hear that little bit of noise. I know the fish is close and I know it's coming into netting range. So there's two reasons I use the leader. Then we've got the eight pound or the 8.8 .8 pound again to be ultra accurate. That I use for sort of commercials, short range feeder fishing. Say if I was going somewhere like decoy for feeder masters and that, and I was chucking across on the strip lakes, which is what, sort of 25 meter maximum chuck, eight pound Pulse Pro, it's bulletproof. Still casts really well though, because it's literally 0.24.7 diameter. So it's still very low diameter, but it's very hard wearing, very abrasion resistant. Literally, it's not gonna let me down. So they're my three choices of mono, nice and simple. Of course, mono's brilliant, but a lot of my feeder fishing is done on natural venues, and that's where braid comes into its own. There's two sizes in braid I use, both are Pulse 8. I use the 010 and the 008. Firstly, why do I use braid? Well, there's two main reasons for me. The first one is zero stretch. So basically it helps to magnify bites. Uh, so if you're struggling to see your bites in a big wind and using mono, if you can switch to braid where the rules allow, obviously, then you'll see your bites far easier and be able to hit more bites as a result. It's just easier to read. The second reason is casting. Braid is much lower diameter than mono, 
you know, look at that one, it's 008, the pulsate is there. Because it's lower diameter, it makes casting easier. So if you're trying to be accurate in a big wind, it's got low stretch, as in zero stretch, and obviously low diameter, you can be far more accurate. One of the things with mono, it still casts brilliantly, but if you're really punching into a big wind, that little bit of stretch in the mono, can just, you can just lose a little bit of accuracy, whereas you don't get that with braid. I will say here as well, the O10, which is that one, I tend to use for speed fishing for roach or skimmers, short range work, where I want it to be really hard wearing, distances isn't important, and quite often with that, I'll use it direct. And the reason I'll use it direct is, again, just to magnify bites. You'll be amazed if you put like a, even a one and a half meter leader on to braid, it dulls its sensitivity down massively. So when I'm speed fishing for small silver fish in places like Ireland, then I'll always fish it direct, sort of up to sort of 30 meters probably. The 008 though, is more my general UK braid. Venues like Ferry Meadows, where I'm fishing for bream, from sort of 40 to 60 meters, a little bit lower diameter than the 010, makes casting that little bit easier, which to me is really important. When I'm fishing that type of venue, casting is key. If you can't get to the fish, you can't catch them. So that's why I tend to drop down to the 008. So last but certainly not least is how to load your reels with line or braid. Now the first step is bucket of water. There's two reasons to use a bucket of water. First one is to get some tension. So when you're winding the line onto it, it should always go on under tension. You get much better, more compact, need to line lay that way. The second reason is wet mono or wet braid just loads on that little bit nicer. So first thing to consider is backing. Most reels will need a little bit of backing. The Aventus 4000 is no different. So I've got some, I've just dropped it in the tub of water already. I've got some eight pound old mono there and I'm gonna use that as my backing. What I would say, you can use any mono for backing or you could use braid for backing if you want, but braid is quite expensive. But try and keep it quite a lowish diameter. Like if you're using like 15 pound liners backing on a small reel, it won't like load on very nice. So any line within reason is backing, eight, six pound or eight pound is absolutely spot on. So I've attached this to the reel. The way I've done it is literally tied a loop in the back end and then just used what I call like a hangman's noose, tightened it around the spool and then just wound a few turns on. So all I'm going to do now is just wind it on. Obviously the reel's in, the spool's in the water, that's giving me a bit of tension. I'm also keeping it nice and tight, as you can see my right hand there, just making sure it's going on nice and tight. It's important to put a towel down as well because there's a little bit of water going all over the place. Now, if you've got several reels the same size, I'm not doing this today, but what you can do, buy a bulk spooler back in, and then you can actually count the turns on. So you know exactly how many turns of back in you need, say for 024 mono, for 021 mono, etc., etc. I don't do it like that, I'm a little bit rough and ready, but a lot of people do and they find it makes it a lot simpler. So I'm just trying to judge it by eye. So I'm keeping an eye on the spool while I'm winding the backing on. And we're gonna put eight pound Pulse Pro onto this. Now Pulse Pro comes on, you do get an odd little wrap up, 300 meter spools. And there's a 150 meter marker on the spool. I could have wound, because of the depth of the Aventus reel, I could have wound 300 meters of uh, eight pound pulse pro straight on and it probably would have been about perfect but that means I only get one reel out of a spool now the beauty of pulse pro is 300 meters with that line marker I can get two reels out of one spool which makes it obviously a lot better value for money and I don't need 300 meters on you know I mean 100 I'm not going to be casting 120 meters of eight pounds so 150 meters is plenty so now I've got this to a level where I think it's about right for 150 meters of eight pound. Like I said, if you wanted to count the turns, and I know a lot of people did, you could have done that, and you'd have a guide, you could formulate a little guide to exactly how many turns, so you get it spot on every single time. So I'm gonna cut that now, with a little pair of scissors, because I'm happy I've got enough back in, and I'm just gonna attach the eight pound Pulse Pro. Okay, so I've wound my back in on, then I've attached my eight pound Pulse Pro, just tied a loop in the back in, a half blood knot, to attach the Pulse Pro, trim the knots tight so there's no little tag. I don't want tags sticking out because they could affect sort of casting or ended up sticking out 
once I finish loading the reel. A little tip, whether it makes a difference or not, but something I do, I always try and push the knots to the bottom of the spool. To me, they're sort of out of the way. I don't want my two knots at the top, whereby they could perhaps cause a slightly uneven line lay or even a little bit of friction on the cast. So I always keep them at the bottom. So literally now it's a case, I've dropped the eight pound pulse pro in the bucket and just wind it on. Like I said, that towel is uh, quite handy at times like this because there's water going everywhere. Important again, I feel with that right hand, just to get a little bit of grip, just so you're keeping that line under a nice bit of tension. And also keep an eye on the spool, just make sure it's going on how I want it to. Could have done with two towels for this, to be fair. What you're looking for is flat line lay. I'm not looking for like it to be bulked at the bottom or bulked at the top. I want nice flat line lay and I want it to be sitting just under that top lip. You don't want the line spilling out the top of the reel because if it does on the car, that's when you can get what I call like an overshoot whereby too much line comes out and you end up with a massive tangle. So always try and aim just to fill the bottom of the spool and just under the top. I'm not far off there. I've slightly underdone it, but as you can see there, you can just see that. I can see the 150 meter line sticker. I'm slightly obviously under 150 meters, but the fact I can see that sticker tells me I've got well over 100 meters of the eight pound pulse pro on, which is more than enough. If I wind any more on, now I'm in danger of overloading the reel. So 100 meters is plenty. So all I'm gonna do, protect my teeth, take my scissors, cut that off and literally drop it under the clip and I'm ready to go fishing. So just to round up, a couple of final tips. What to look for. What I try and do is you want the line almost level with the bottom lip of the spool and then slightly underneath the top lip. If there's too much line on, it'll just explode off. And if it's exploding off, you're gonna get tangles and you're gonna get problems. Equally, if you can see like half a centimeter of spool below that top lip and the line, you've underspooled it. And underspooling means you're gonna get friction on the cast, so you're gonna lose distance. So the perfect level, virtually level at the, with the bottom lip, just underneath that top lip. So you're just getting that little bit of tension as the line comes off, and that's gonna to help to minimize any tangles. Lastly, braid is slightly different when you're spooling up. It's not quite as easy, but a great little tip. Obviously the water is essential with braid in terms of it going on, but also wind it through a wet cloth. So I just, I just dunk that cloth in the water where I was holding the mono there, wet cloth, just wind it through. And what that does helps to take the coating off the braid. Now the coating, all braids have a coating on them, makes the braid sit a little bit higher in the water, sometimes makes it float. The coating is why braid gets better with use. Once you get that coating off, so if I wound that through under tension, wet cloth, when I go like that normally, I'd see a, a mark where I've took some of the coating off the braid. You, you're not losing anything good. You're actually taking the coating off, braid will fish better, which in turn means it'll cast better, sink better, and it just gets better and better with use. But that wet cloth just gives it a nice head start. There you go. That's my guide to real choice, including obviously real sizes and which I use for what jobs. Lines and monos, again, running through what I use and why. And also, and perhaps most importantly, how to load a reel correctly. One last little tip though, and that is when you're loading a reel with a bucket of water, it's a lot better done outside because I'm now off to mop the floor. <laughs>